Live with the community, this is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Development bi-weekly call. Today is October 13th. How are we so far into 2022 already? We are excited for what's going to come next in the rest of this year. My name is David Warner. I will be your host with Microsoft. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. So we've got a number of agenda items, latest updates on the community, PNP.NET libraries, PowerShell, Yo! Teams, Teams Toolkit, Graph Toolkit, Publisher Connectors, oh my. And then talk about samples, we got them. Latest on script samples, Microsoft team samples, Power Platform samples. What time will that be after that? Picture time with Together Mode. So we'd like to see everybody, if you're willing to uh, share your camera, we'll show and wave to the community to show how awesome you all are. Then we're going to get to our fantastic presenters of the day, the All-Stars. Joe Unwin is going to show us the Fantasy Premier League Independent Power Platform Connector. So all you sports fans are rejoicing right now and celebrating. You're excited to see that, and so am I. Then we're going to turn to Fabio. He's going to show how to create a better version of the HTML text component using a PCF component in Power App. So uh, that is a whole lot that we are excited about seeing. Let's first talk about your opportunity to participate in the community. Uh, this is an open community. We all have a part in it, and we want you to feel empowered to do that as well. Uh, so we invite you to demo a solution or a technical pattern here on calls such as this. Uh, you are more than welcome. In fact, we've even got an easy form for you to fill out to show your interest. Um, and if you're not familiar or not comfortable, we can even partner you up with a buddy. So don't hesitate to get involved. You can also contribute on GitHub. Uh, these are samples that you're going to see a lot about here in the intro part of this call. Uh, you're going to have opportunities to submit samples to there and share them with the world. You're going to see amazing samples that others have created as well. And we're going to show you a program that's going to empower you if you're not familiar with how to do that. We also love feedback. So if you've got any feedback, constructive, or areas even that you do like that we're already doing that you'd like to see us do more of, uh, don't hesitate to provide that feedback. We're always looking to improve all areas of the community uh, because it is a, a program that it's set up for you. This is your community, and we want to make sure that you're empowered to, to kind of steer that wheel. So don't hesitate to get more involved. Now, let's take a, an overview glance of all of the different resources uh, that are available to you. We've got a collection of developer and community videos uh, that uh, showcase uh, features and uh, implementations of the solutions and the software that we all love and use every single day. We've got a number of open source initiatives uh, around Microsoft Graph and SharePoint, Office Development, a Power Platform that you can take advantage of. And then, as I mentioned, sample galleries aplenty. There are a plethora, uh, as I said last week, a cornucopia as we get into fall of sample galleries. So uh, those are team samples, SPFX samples, Power Platform samples, SPFX extensions, list formatting. Uh, the list goes on and all on and on. And you can see all of them at aka.ms forward slash m365 slash samples. Uh, but we've got so many other uh, beneficial resources for you. And there's really only one URL that you have to keep track of. And that is aka.ms forward slash m365 slash community. That will give you access to all of the variety of programs and initiatives and samples that we're going to show you about today. That's not all. If you call now, you get even more calls. Community calls aplenty. We have so many for you to choose from, uh, and they're all valuable in their own specific details. So let's start at the top, Microsoft 365 Platform. This is a weekly call. Now, what makes this unique? It is only Microsoft presenters. That means that you're going to get all of the information directly from the mothership here in uh, Microsoft. So we want you to feel empowered to know more, and so we're going to bring you all of that from within uh, the the you know, the walls of Microsoft and so that you can feel like you're keeping up to date. There's also adaptive cards, Microsoft Identity Platform, Office add-ins. There's a monthly Power Platform call that happens next week. Uh, there are the bi-weekly calls that you are on. So today is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform development call. Uh, the sibling for that is the Viva Connections and SharePoint framework that happens at the exact same time next week. You can get access to all of these calls uh, at aka.ms forward slash m365 slash calls. Now, looking at that Microsoft-only call, it's going to occur next week on the 18th of October uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it is going to have two topics this or next week. Uh, Brian and Cameron are going to cover introduction to Microsoft Graph Search APIs. And then IKEA is going to uh, cover build your first command bot in C Sharp for Microsoft Teams with Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. So uh, a nice array of opportunities to learn directly from those at Microsoft. Now, as you're going through all of our uh, programs and initiatives today, uh, you may say, wow, that is a lot. How do I get involved? 
uh, how can I learn more? I'm not quite sure how all that works. And um, these things like GitHub and pull requests and samples being contributed, how, how does that happen? Uh, well, it happens because of amazing individuals like you. Uh, but we understand that there may be some hurdles that are involved with submitting those within the repositories. Uh, it might be a little complex when you hear things like forking and pull requests. And what is all that? Sounds awfully uh, adversarial. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's just words and terms and phrases that our services and platforms use. Um, but we understand that there may be some uh, fear to that. So uh, Sharing is Caring is a program that is here to provide you that hands-on guidance. And what does that mean? It means in live sessions, we're going to provide safe space opportunities, which means that the calls are not recorded for you to interact and collaborate with other members of the community, members of Microsoft, MVPs. Uh, we are one big community family, so we want you to feel empowered uh, to do more. And yeah, just like Daniel said in the chat, who, me? Yes, absolutely, you, every single one of you. We want you to be empowered. So these sessions are uh, live and they are also safe space, as I mentioned, so not recorded. Um, now, we do know that uh, we're getting more and more of these sessions. Uh, so we're starting to build some video series on them that you can kind of reflect back on or kind of on demand watch in advance, things that make sense, like providing the information about being a uh, first time presenter, some tips and tricks, uh, using NVM to empower you to do more with the PNP SBFX samples. So we want you to be empowered to do more. And so we're going to empower you together. We're going to show you and you can learn more at aka.ms forward slash sharing is caring. Now, once you have contributed, we want you to feel recognized and appreciated. And so we have started the recognition program for the community. Now, this is a unique, one of a kind, community driven recognition program. In fact, it's the first that Credly, the same Credly that provides those badges to you when you get Microsoft certified, they are who we are partnering with. And so we are providing you badges as well. Now, these badges are super, super cool because it's official, it's accredited. You can associate them to your LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can put them on Twitter and share them. You can share them with your clients, with your managers, or both letting them know that you're making a difference. Uh, and it is absolutely free. We only need you to opt in so that we can kind of track some of the contributions that you're doing within the community. Uh, and once you do that, you only need to do it once. We'll continue to track year after year. And as you see, these badges have uh, year assignments to them, year tags. So we're, we're going to do this continually. And it's something that it's not just a once, one time only. We want to continue to recognize you. We're doing more and more programs with badges. Uh, going to be working on a PNP PowerShell badge here soon and getting that out. Uh, but what's exciting about right now is we have a badge for Hacktoberfest. So if you contribute just one contribution in October, you are going to get a Hacktoberfest badge that is only available for this month in October 2022. So don't hesitate to opt in. Don't hesitate to contribute. Want to learn more on how you can do that? There's a variety of ways. You can even contribute via documentation, helping update documentation. That is absolutely a contribution that we love and is absolutely valid. So don't hesitate to get more involved. Uh, we want to help you do that and recognize you. All right, let's talk about some project specific updates. Uh, we are going to begin with PNP.NET libraries. Hello, Over. David. Um, yes. Uh, Dot .NET, um, I think one milestone to celebrate, uh, we crossed the 1 million downloads for the PNP Core SDK NuGet package, so I think that's uh, amazing. Uh, now, on the Core SDK side, what happened, uh, Jens did uh, provide uh, features to uh, kind of add group members when provisioning uh, group connected sites, so that's new. Uh, Queen did work on our Vivo Connection support, so we have support to actually provision Vivo Connections to put uh, cards uh, in the dashboard and so on to edit them and could need some extensions there and some uh, minor bug fixes, I would say, um, that, that happened. On the PNP framework side, uh, the key thing is that the, the new provisioning schema, the 2022-09 uh, schema is uh, in our dev branch, in our nightly build, so you can try it out. Uh, Paolo and Paul Bullock did a ton of work there, uh, so thank you guys uh, to uh, add those new features, implement the features, uh, not just in the scheme, but also in, in the provisioning engine. So that will be really useful for our customers and ISVs using that. And next to that, uh, there is a set of fixes done by uh, Patrick, Martin, and, and Matt uh, uh, in, in, uh, in PP Framework. And yeah, I think that, and we're, kind of prepping for new releases. It's about time to get a new release out. We moved away from the monthly rhythm, but uh, th that doesn't mean that we shouldn't release uh, anymore. So if you, <laughs> so I think we can release uh, somewhere in the coming weeks. 
All right, uh, Gotham, move to PowerShell. Thanks, thanks, Bert. Uh, yep, PNP PowerShell, some background here. So is, it is a cross-platform uh, PowerShell library that you can use to connect to SharePoint, Teams, and other Microsoft 365 uh, products here. Uh, we crossed the 3.2 million download mark. Uh, PNP PowerShell, by the way, runs everywhere, almost wherever PowerShell runs. PowerShell 5, PowerShell 7, Azure Cloud Shell, Azure Functions, Runbooks, and even the Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, so what? What's new in the PNP PowerShell? Yep, uh, we added managed identity support for all SharePoint commandlets. So even if you are thinking of provisioning via PNP templates or anything, uh, we do support managed identity. Uh, we added a new command. Uh, I'm going to use David's favorite word here, plethora. So we added plethora of changes here in this uh, couple of weeks, uh, past weeks. So we added a new command to retrieve sign in logs. Uh, we also added a command to easily disable or enable PowerShell telemetry collection. Uh, if you are using PNP Teams tag, we added some commands to handle team tag information, like whether you want to list tags from a particular team, whether you want to update that, or if you want to remove that tag. Uh, one very uh, important request was that uh, support for inline images. So there is a modern text web part which supports inline images. So we we extended the add PNP page text web part to support inline images. Uh, we also created a new PNP image web part which will handle just simple image upload of uh, showing the images inside the uh, web part there. Uh, besides that, there are tons of bug fixes and improvements uh, which are going on. Uh, what we are thinking of next is uh, support for .NET 6. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. before I forget, um, we have also have an um, announcement to make. If you have not seen it on Twitter, uh, we uh, we enabled, uh, we created a module related to PowerShell predictions. So it think of it as an autocomplete for PNP PowerShell. Uh, I'll do check it out. It is right now in beta. Uh, again, it was a great work done by our fellow PNP community member Anup. So yeah, uh, do check that out. Uh, yeah, besides that, it is Hacktober month, so we would absolutely love your contributions in the PNP PowerShell and of course the PNP framework and the .NET libraries as well. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, over to you, David. Awesome, thank you, Adam. And I have to admit, PNP PowerShell and Raspberry Pi sounds delicious. So loving that. All right, let's move over to Yo Teams with Steven. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, for Yo Teams, we still see a lot of growth in the usage, which is really great. Um, we have some news to share with you today. The first one is that we have released version 1.8.0 for Yo Teams Build Core with some minor typing mistakes fixed by Robert and an update to the code QL analysis by Rick, so thanks a bunch. We also did some repo cleaning and switched from master to main branch finally. And apart from that, we're still in discussions on which topics to focus on next. And we think about adding more docs and tutorials, of course, but besides of that, we also have a bunch of ideas on like VS Code extensions, support for more features in your teams. But we would like to, sh to hear from you and your feedback so please jump into the discussions and issues on GitHub. Let us know what you'd like to see for your teams and maybe also contribute as it's October uh, Fest. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Excellent. Let's uh, move into a Microsoft Teams Toolkit. I think this is going to cover this for us today. Yeah, for this time, uh, it's going to be me. So the Teams Toolkit is the, the alternative option or the, the Microsoft provided options for building the Microsoft Teams uh, solutions. Um, and the latest version was released uh, as 4.0.6 in the late September. Uh, right now, uh, there's a lot of focus on new samples um, around the um, around the Teams Toolkit um, in the github.com slash office dev slash Teams FX dash samples. And those samples will be pretty soon uh, surfaced also in a unified sample gallery. So you'll have a one location to find all of the Teams samples, not just the Microsoft ones and in a different location. 4.0.7 uh, preview version is already out. And uh, the, the up, that's going to be released later. I this month, I guess, I'm not going to provide any exact dates. Um, and there will be additional samples available, uh, which are built with the Teams Toolkit. But if you have uh, issues or findings or feedback, please, please, please use the Teams FX issue list. Um, there's a lot of auto engineering people who would love to know more how we can help uh, to make your development for Microsoft Teams easier. Awesome. That's Thank it you, for Vesa. this one. Awesome. Thank yep. you, Vesa. All right, let's keep the train going. Move over to Microsoft Graph Toolkit with uh, officially now Big Daddy Seb Levert. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. You cannot see me right now. I want to turn my camera on because it's Ignite. 
<laughs> so it's the comeback of the giraffe suit, everybody. Uh, so we're celebrating by wearing the giraffe kit. Amazing. Uh, so what's new in the Microsoft Graph Toolkit? Our release 2.6.1 was out a couple of weeks ago. We are on the verge of just shipping another version with a bunch of great capabilities. Uh, lots of that are coming from community feedback around um, component disambiguation, around um, localization, all of that. Really, really excited about this. Um, we have our MGT sample repository that um, I'd love you to go and uh, use, aka.ms slash MGT slash sample. So if you have anything you're working on with MGT, would love to learn from you and would love you to uh, share with the community. That's going to be eligible for the um, Hacktoberfest. So feel free, jump in, uh, submit your stuff right there. You want to try what's next? NPMI Microsoft slash MGT at next. Or if you want to really be curious about what we're building a big new update around Fluent UI, NPMI at Microsoft slash MGT at next.fluentui. Come fix our bugs, help us, share your thoughts. Bring your own requirements. We'd love to hear from you. Back to you, David. Awesome, Seb. Love it and love the outfit. Fantastic. All right. Independent Publisher Connectors with Jocelyn. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. We have some exciting news in the world of independent publisher connectors. Since the last time we spoke, we have contributions from four new IPs, including Victor, Shadrach, Mar, and Yusidem. As I mentioned last time, there was a 30 days of Fusion Hackathon going on, which is now concluding. Some of these IP contributors are from that hackathon, and thank you so much to them for their submissions. These connectors have not all been certified yet, but I have seen some proposals, and I am absolutely thrilled with the ideas. I am hoping to be sharing those all with you in a few weeks as they go out the pipeline. We are now at a total of 64 IPs. We also have seven new certified connectors from IP since two weeks ago as well, including some of the following from our most active community member and independent publisher, Troy Taylor. Check lead, did you mean this? Dynamic Docs, Replicate and Synthesia. We also have Focus Mate from Phil and Working Days from Tomas. Thank you to you all. And last week, I announced a certification of Joe Unwin's connector, Fantasy Premier League, and I am so excited that he will be sharing that with all of us today. Um, due to all of these amazing contributors, we are now at a total of 180 independent publisher connectors. To put that in proportion, the entire connector ecosystem across all of Power Automate, Power Apps, and Azure Logic Apps includes 842 total connectors, nearly half as third-party verified publishers, and another good chunk of Microsoft first-party connectors. So these independent publisher connectors now make up nearly a quarter of that pie chart, all due to the power of this community and contrib contributions from devs like you guys. And as I mentioned at the start, the 30 Days of Fusion Hackathon is coming to a close. But as David mentioned earlier, there is another ongoing opportunity for connector building. The Hacktoberfest is sponsored by DigitalOcean, currently open. I'm going to drop some links in the chat. This hackathon focuses on leveraging open source code for innovation, and our repo is indeed involved with this program. Uh, I'll send all of the links here as well as my contacts. Please reach out to me if you're interested in any of these activities or if I can help your connector building experience at all. Thank you, everyone. Handing it back over to Script Samples. Awesome. Thank you, Jocelyn. And for that, we will invite Paul. Hey, thank you, David. So Script Samples is a place where you can share scripts with the community. So this will be any tasks where you're automating any scenarios against 365 using a variety of tools such as Microsoft Graph, uh, SDK, CLI for 365, PMP PowerShell, SP Management Shell, and many, many more. And all these samples are integrated with the Microsoft Solution Sample Gallery. So all of these samples will be uh, seen there. So if you contribute here, then that gets published there automatically, which is super, super cool. Um, we've got four scenarios and one update on the uh, on the repo, which is which is super cool. So the first one is update content type of files in a folder with system update by Reshmi. We've got change a placeholder text in SharePoint search box by Ganesh. Uh, we've also got activate a site feature within SharePoint Online by Ganesh and uh, disable SharePoint list commenting at tenant level by Ganesh. So obviously there's a theme there. So thank you very much, Ganesh, for the, the and Reshmi for the multiple uh, multiple contributions there. That's really, really cool. Uh, we've got one updated sample for the CLI, which is the export term store items to CSV. Um, if you want to contribute to the repo, obviously you're absolutely welcome to. Uh, it's Hacktoberfest, so they will be recognized as well. I do tag the uh, the issues accordingly. 
as they come through. Um, if you're having any issues with that or, or want to learn more, there is a contributing button on the site which gives you some some docs or you by, by all means reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, I'm open D D DMs to help you get going um, at any point in time. Thank you very much for all the samples that you've done. All your contributions are welcome. This, this couldn't be as big as it is uh, without everybody involved. So thank you very much. Back to you, David. Here, here. Absolutely agree, Paul. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for all your amazing contributions. And another opportunity. Well, let's talk about some Microsoft Teams samples with Bob German. Hey, hello, everyone. So we don't have any brand new samples. Uh, it's it's hot. It's Hacktoberfest. So I'm hoping to see some more uh, coming in. However, uh, Marcus has updated his amazing uh, tab meeting movie app where you get to vote on movies and watch them together. Um, and so I just love the fact that they're that we're getting updates. So um, as well and to kind of keep the quality going. And so I really appreciate that. And I guess if you don't mind, I'm going to put in a quick plug that my team is putting together. If you want to learn about Teams app development and monetization, please join us um, on October 20th um, for a an app a special app camp live webinar. So I'll put that in the chat and back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and last but certainly not least is Power Platform Samples. So we have a new convert uh, doc into a PDF uh, flow from Power Automate by Chandani. Uh, so definitely check that out. We've got a number more that uh, ended up coming in after the Power Platform Conference. We had that. We have now Ignite. So we're catching up on those PRs. So be patient with us. We really appreciate all of that. We had our first ever sharing is carrying live in the Power Platform Conference. So that was really cool. Got some contributions from that. So again, thank you everyone for all that you're doing doing across the board for all these programs and initiatives, it would not be possible without you. What else wouldn't be possible without you? Picture time. So let's get those fantastic faces showing up on the cameras. Uh, Vesta will take over and yep. In one there second, already sharing screen. I'm already recording, but let's wait for 50 people to join. I will get my camera on as well. Oh, I can see the giraffe on the background, second row. Not yet, not yet. Wait, 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 wait. Giraffe is there, giraffe is there. Giraffe can be the example of how do we do waving, right? There we go. Excellent. There we go. Everybody, so <laughs> we're already recording. We are hitting the 50. Here we go. So let's do some hand waving, everybody. Thank you once again on joining on the community call. Awesome to have you on the call. And thank you, Jeff, for being the example on the second row on the, on the back. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, everybody. We'll crap a gif animation out of that and sharing that in the social media. Thank you. Thank you. Really cool. Awesome. Thank you, Vesa. And thank you, everyone. Let's get back to our agenda now. Uh, and our first demo of the day is by Joe Unwin on, again, the Fantasy Premier League Independent Power Platform Connector. So all of us sports fans are excited. Joe, take it away. Hi, everyone. So, yes, I'm here to talk to you about the Fantasy Premier League Independent Connector that I've created. Um, but before that, let's just touch on who I am. My name's Joe Unwin. I'm also known as Flo Joe in the community. I'm a Microsoft MVP and MCT. I work at Itachi Solutions as a solution architect and CE training lead. And if you need to contact me for any reason about Flow or anything like that, contact me at flojo at outlook.com or visit my blog at www.flojo.io. Okay, so firstly, we should really touch on what is the Fantasy Premier League. So if there's anyone on this call that has no idea what I'm talking about, it is essentially a fantasy football league that you can pick a squad of players, you can buy and sell um, each of them each week, uh, you get one free transfer, you get deducted points if you um, do more than that. You can uh, then get points based on how your team performs and then you get a total of weekly points and that gets added to your total points. And then each game week, your leaderboard's updated. So whoever's doing best with the most total points will be at the top, and whoever's doing worst will be at the bottom. And then at the end of the season, the highest point team wins. Uh, it's relatively simple, but it's super popular. There's over 10 million users worldwide. And um, even at my own company, Hitachi, we've got over 20 people playing in our little league. OK, so. Why did I create this? Well, firstly, I created it at Tutachi simply because uh, we have this chat and everyone's talking about what's going on, but you have to go onto the website and get the information and you're looking at that solo, right? We wanted to build camaraderie within the team, especially as we're all remote workers. So I created a custom connector 
and uh, was posting all of the information about our league into the chat every Monday morning for a recurrence on Flow. And then um, I decided to uh, essentially build it out, uh, build more features and make it into an independent connector because that's the great thing about the independent connector initiative is that any custom connector that you create, you can then build out, submit it to GitHub and it can be used for everyone. Um, so let's look at the process then. Well, what we're going to be doing then is we're going to be looking at how Power Automate Independent Connector requests the information. The information is going to be requested from the Fantasy Premier League. Uh, they're going to respond with um, to our request with uh, information based in JSON. Then we're going to uh, receive that information in Power Automate, um, manipulate it, and then send it to Teams. And then Teams will receive that data and display the message to the users. So what can we actually do with this independent connector? We have multiple different actions. We have the classic league standing action. The classic league standing action essentially allows you to get all the information on your league. And this is what the majority of people use if they use this uh, connector. This is what I use all the time. But then you have fixtures, so you can get like upcoming fixtures, previously played fixtures. You can get like the score results from teams that have just played, etc. You have game week live data, so you can get all the information about that particular game week. You get general information, such as team of the week and how, what, what people have been transferring in and out. You also have like basic manager information, such as like the manager is a user. Um, you get to get their first name, last name, team names, the leagues that are in. Uh, you also get the history of a manager, which allows you to get breakdowns of their like previous years play, the transfers that they've made. It's more specific information. And then I've also added a player's detailed data action that allows you to pull data on specific individuals. So if you wanted to find more information about your favorite player and how they're doing, you could provide their ID and then you can pull that information. OK, so let's jump straight on to Power Automate and have a look. Um, what we are going to be doing firstly is I'm going to be building out a flow that essentially grabs the league information, passes it to Microsoft Teams, and I'll show you how relatively easy it is. But um, what I'll do as well, because we're limited on time, is I'll go into a more complex flow that I've created to show you how complex you can get with this type of stuff um, and get all of the information that you require. So let me just delete this as this was just a template. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to type Fantasy Premier League um, and I can select the uh, independent published connector and then I can select the classic league standings. Now, all you need to do here is provide a league ID. Now, how do we find that league ID? So if I jump over to my team uh, doing relatively OK um, and you can see all the information about your team here, but down at the bottom, you have the classic leagues. Now, I'm not signed in, so all of this information is public. Um, so if I go to the Hitachi All-Stars League, for example, you can see that we have all of the information about the individuals, uh, the game week scores, and the total scores. But at the top in the uh, URL, we have fantasy.premierleague.com slash leagues slash an ID. Now, that ID is what you want to copy. And then if we go back to our flow and paste it in here, what that's going to do then is that's going to pull the information on our league. So let's just run a quick test on that and see um, what information we get back. OK, so as you can see, super fast. Uh, get all of the J uh, data back in JSON. Uh, once it loads, yep. OK, so you can see we've got the name of the league. We've got when it was created. We've got all of the information, if it has a cup and, and so on. And then we've got all of the information, as you can see on here, such as the rank, the team name, the uh, person name, game week, um, the total score. We, we've got all of that information in here as well, plus more. So we can actually get more information than the actual website is displaying to us. Now. What this allows us to do then is this allows us to manipulate the data that we get back um, and set it up to make it into a nice and easy readable way um, before we send it to Microsoft Teams. So the next thing we're going to do is simply 
uh, create a HTML table. And we're going to pass in um, the information. Now, if you haven't seen this before, I've got um, uh, if in settings, um, the Power Automate settings, I've got the experimental features on because what this does is it gives you this nice larger area for dynamic values and uh, expression box. Um, so if you're looking to get a bigger expression box, that's how you can do it. So what we can do then is I'm going to select the classic league standing results. And then in here, I'm going to open advanced options and I'm going to customize the columns because I want to get specific information. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set position as my first header, and then I need to select the actual dynamic data that I'm going to be using. So I know that the dynamic data is rank. So we've got um, last rank and then we've got the uh, classic, just the current rank, the current position. So what I'm going to then do is do previous so we can see who's actually either gone up or gone down. So if I just write rank in here again and do last rank, and then what I'm going to do is uh, the name of the actual individual. So this is going to be player name. And then I'm going to do total to get the actual total score. And then I'm going to get the um, this week's total. OK, so then now what we've done then is we've essentially created a table and um, pulled all of the information that we want to display into our teams. We want to display the position, the previous position, the current player name, the total um, score that they've actually got, and then the actual score that they've got this week. Because at Hitachi, for example, I have this running um, every Monday morning at uh, 7 a.m. Eastern so that everyone can come into work and see, be really happy that they've got, um, they've moved up on the league or uh, not so happy because unfortunately someone's overtaken them. So let's have a look at this then. Let's just run this and see what we get back from our HTML table. OK, cool. So as you can see here, information is split up into a nice, easy to read table. Now we know that, um, for example, myself this week, I'm in rank six last week. I'm in rank seven. Mr. Tabor was rank six last week, but he's now moved down to rank seven because I had a good week. I've got my total points here and the amount of points that I've got during that week. So then we need to get this into um, Microsoft Teams. OK, so how do we do this then? We can simply uh, use the Microsoft Teams um, uh, action and we can post to a chat um, or channel. Now, depending on how you want to set this up in your uh, Teams, you can either have it in a channel or like us, we have just a chat with everyone in it. Um, you can also post to that, right? So uh, if we select uh, Flowbot and then we can select um, the actual chat that we want to go into, um, this will then be able to go into our particular channel here. Um, for some reason, my chat's not showing up. Not entirely sure why. Um, uh, let me delete that and try again. Huh, interesting. For some reason, my uh, I don't know why, but it's not my, my message channel isn't showing up. But anyway, what I can do is I can just jump straight over to my other flow. So now we've gone from basically creating the HTML table and posting it into Teams to building out a HTML table for our, our league, exactly the same, but we've now gone into fixtures. So how this works then is uh, I want to go through the fixtures i want to get the latest fixtures so i want to get the latest results from our events so we've got for example uh, nottingham forest versus aston villa was the last game i want to get the last three for example so what i can do then is i can call those fixtures but what i'm doing at the beginning is i'm creating an array of team names 
So why am I going through this and ar arranging these team names? Well, if you go on to the Wikipedia, you can just copy a list of all of these team names. And what I've done then is I've pasted this into Excel. And as you can see, we've got one to 20. Now, the Fantasy Premier League doesn't actually send you a team name back. They send you a team number. They must be keeping their um, team names on a database somewhere that they call in that we don't actually have access to. So this is how you can get around uh, situations like that. Is that. You can create an array. Uh, you add uh, a string array of all of these teams. And obviously, a, an array is base of zero. So Arsenal would be zero. Aston Villa would be one, etc. So if we get one through for Arsenal, we need to minus one from that to get the team name from the array. So I can go into them fixtures. I call the fixtures and pass in the JSON. All I've done is I've run this previously, copied the result back from that, and generated a sample from it. Then I'm filtering my array. Now, what I'm doing in this filter array is that I'm using the AND because I'm doing two different um, filters. And I'm saying that I, I'm using the not equals kickoff time is null because I, uh, team games get uh, moved. Sometimes they don't kick off. Uh, for whatever reason, they get cancelled. So I don't want to receive any of those. I just want to receive the games that have played. So I'm putting a uh, not equals um, kickoff time of null, as well as I'm doing an equals of finish because I only want the games that have been played because this gives you every single fixture. So I only want the games that have actually been played. Then um, what I've got here is I'm going through and sorting the array. Now, this is a, a new um, this is a new function that's been added uh, called sort. Um, and I'm just passing through the output of my filter array, and I'm sorting by the kickoff time. Now, the ascending kickoff time um, goes from oldest to newest. So I need to then wrap that in a reversal. I get the newest on top. And then I'm going to essentially use the function called take and get the last three results. So I'm just passing the output, comma, three, and then taking uh, the three results that I want. And again, I'm passing the output into there and building up a table. Now this table then is built up with the home team name. So I'm going to have the home team name, their score, the score of the away team, then the away team name, and then the time that it actually uh, took place. Now, as I mentioned previously, We've got uh, a variable on top of FPL names. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the subtraction um, function and passing in the team number that they are giving me from this uh, data, from the fixtures. And then I'm subtracting one from it so that we get to the base of zero for the array. And I'm passing that in the square brackets. So then it will pull the name from our array rather than having to have a number and no one knows what the number is, right? So then we'll get a, um, a name through, we'll get a team score through, then we'll get the name of the away team, then we'll get the kickoff time. And then, so that's what this is what you should be, uh, should have seen in the uh, last flow is that we have the fantasy Premier League group chat. And what happens then is we use the flow bot posting group chat, fantasy Premier League. What this is going to do then is it's going to post on behalf of the user that runs it. So it will say uh, Flowbot on behalf of Joe Onwin, for example. Then I'm just uh, populating the message, right? So I'm doing FPL ranks at, and I'm just using a format date time, UTC now. I'm pulling in the full day. So it would say Thursday now, for example. And then I'm just doing the date. So month, day, year. I'm putting the output of our table that we was creating previously on the previous flow with the position, previous name, total this week, etc. And then I'm doing latest outputs of the latest matches and I'm passing that into here for that output. So let's run this then and I'll show you what it looks like in Microsoft Teams. OK, so um, these have run in parallel. That's why we've got the two different bits here and our tables have been created. Uh, you can see the table here as well as all of the filtered table here. So we've got the last three results. We've got Nottingham Forest versus Aston Villa, Everton versus Man United and Arsenal versus Liverpool. This one I'm particularly happy about. Um, then we post to the uh, channel. So this is what happens then um, is that 
we now have a nice, easy to read table get posted to our Fantasy Premier League chat. We have all of the information based on the positions, the previous, the name, the total, um, and the this week's total. And then you can see the latest results here, the time that they were played in BST. And we essentially have all of the information to it. But um, let's just jump back to here. Now, obviously, I'm doing this as a manual trigger. Uh, and as I mentioned previously in uh, Hitachi, what we've got is we've got a recurrence weekly at Monday morning, 7 a.m. So you can have this flow run every week. So before you come in, comes into your chat, you have all the information there ready for you to go and discuss if you have done well or not. And I had done relatively OK this week, so I was relatively happy, but I was super happy that Arsenal beat Liverpool. OK, that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to now just jump over to a review slide here and just go through what we've actually seen. So what have we actually seen then? We looked at how easy it was to gather league information, create a table from that information and send that information to a team's chat. I'm not entirely sure why um, the action wasn't picking up my chat at that particular point. I'll have to have a look into that. Maybe I selected the wrong action from the excitement of doing this presentation. Then we also saw how you can get more complex. Now, I was um, manipulating a lot of data. I was filtering it. I was essentially cleaning the data that I wanted. And then I was taking specific information and building up a actual table, a HTML table, before sending it to Teams. So you can get really complex with the data that you have, or you can do it really easy if you just want the league information displayed directly into your Teams. I want to just highlight other connectors that I've created. I've created the Dexcom continuous glucose monitoring connector that essentially I'm type 1 diabetic. So I have a continuous glucose monitor. It monitors my blood sugar every day, uh, every five minutes actually, and it sends information to a website. Now, um, parents can't, uh, like they, they, they may want access to what their kids are doing. Um, it gets sent to your mobile device. What you can do is you can then pull that information via the Power Automate and the Power Platform and essentially have a look at that, right? Have a look at uh, 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 blood sugar levels and, and so on. Obviously, this should be, this isn't a, I'm not saying this is a specific medical thing that you should be using, but it's uh, very interesting to like get averages and, and so on. And then I've done a JIRA extension as well that uh, essentially builds upon what was already built on Power Automate. And lastly, if you want to see any more from me, check out www.flojo.io. I go much more into in depth into um, how we build out that fixtures section. So I know we had to go through that relatively quickly. OK, so I'll hand back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Very, very cool. Love how you're integrating some team chemistry using the technology and how extensible it is to also use in other areas of business. So very, very cool. Thank you. Um, I know there's some questions and comments in the chat. I'll let you look at that in the interest of time. So uh, we will now call up Fabio uh, on creating a better version of the uh, HTML text component using PCF components and Power App. So Fabio, take it away. Yeah. Yeah. Let me share my screen. So I to all this quick uh, session it's about how to create a better version of html text uh, component so first of all uh, just a few words about me uh, i'm fabio franzini i'm ceo of uh, appv solutions i'm microsoft mvp both on office development and business category and uh, of course i'm a developer but uh, i wrote code uh, by using uh, typescript node.js basically on uh, SharePoint framework, but uh, I love PowerFX, I love Power Apps to create uh, certain applications. So, in this slide, you can find some a way to contact me, like my email, my Twitter account, LinkedIn, and GitHub. So, the agenda of today it's uh, just an introduction of the uh, default HTML text component in Power Apps Canvas, and then I want to show you just an apoc of uh, an, a component built on uh, Power Apps uh, component framework to uh, create an, a better version of this uh, default HTML text component. I'll show you some uh, demo and, uh, and the code, of course, and then at the end, just uh, an, uh, one, sli one slide with some references. So this is the default, you can see uh, in the slide, the image of the default HTML uh, text component. So basically, it's used to show static HTML inside your Canvas app. 
there are a lot of samples uh, on how to use this component to create uh, some uh, interesting graphical new component just to use HTML. But uh, the first problem is that if you want to generate dynamic HTML, you need to generate uh, the string inside PowerFX by using, for example, the concatenation strings, and then you have to pass this string uh, at this component. And some problems like uh, uh, the performance because you need to calculate the string, or for example, if you want to create uh, complex graphics, you need to use the styles property for the every HTML elements, and then it's not simple to create complex graphics by using just the styles attribute. So it's used to create, uh, not only to show uh, HTML text, but to create a custom, uh, new custom component by using HTML, but have some problems. For example, it, this, uh, this control not support the internal state. For example, if you want to create a uh, dynamic uh, control, uh, you are not able to uh, manage the internal state and it's not uh, implemented the interactivity like uh, uh, custom events and so on. So this is the reason why I tried to create uh, just an APOC of a uh, PCF component named HTML template component. So this component uh, support the creation of dynamic HTML by using two different properties, the HTML template property and the JSON data. Use, internally use the Microsoft Graph Toolkit templating engine to take, of course, the HTML template and apply the JSON data and uh, implement some interesting stuff like uh, the internal state, the possibility to uh, write custom styles using uh, the syntax of the Tailwind CSS. The Tailwind CSS, later I'll show you uh, inside the, 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 the official website. Uh, the syntax is just uh, uh, um, a set of uh, CSS class name that you can use to apply some styles uh, at the HTML elements. And of course, with this component, you are able to handle custom uh, events by using the standard on change behavior property and two different properties, the event type and event data to pass to the from the component to uh, the, the canvas app, which uh, custom event uh, you want to invoke and the data that you want to pass. So basically it's a component that allow you to create new controls, so component with behaviors and internal state, not only to show HTML, uh, static HTML. So this slide, uh, it's another representation of an example of a, a HTML template that you can pass to, to this component. And first of all, you are able to see uh, into the class uh, attributes some strings. And these strings is uh, the class names that come from the Tailwind CSS to apply different styles. But inside this uh, anchor element, for, for example, you are able to see the data dash, uh, for example, for or props. And these two attributes come from the, the syntax of the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So inside this component, I don't use the, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, but just the engine to apply the template. And for example, you, you are able to see that here you can uh, attach to the click of the anchor some functions and then pass some parameters. And then we have the, the syntax to, to bind the, the text that you want to, the value that you want to to show us a text inside the, uh, the, the result. And again, the data dash if, if you want to show or hide some elements based on, for example, the return of this get state function. I implement inside this component some function that uh, uh, it's used by the, the template engine to manage the state of the component and uh, for example, to invoke a custom event. So first of all, we are able to see here the set state uh, function. Uh, this set state uses two parameters, the state name and state value, and it's used to set the internal state uh, if you need to manage the internal state of the component. And then uh, we have uh, another one function uh, named get state uh, that uh, accept just one uh, parameter, state name to retrieve, of course, the internal state. Another one for toggle state to toggle the uh, specific state name value with uh, another value. Basically, it's used, for example, for a Boolean value to set the true or false. And the last one, it's the invoke event function. 
uh, you, you can use to invoke, uh, to emit a custom event and then manage inside the Canvas app by using on change behavior property. So it's time to the demo. First of all, I want to show you, this is my test environment for the Power Apps uh, component framework. And uh, this is the, uh, the component. You are able to see that uh, I'm able here to write some HTML uh, element, uh, and then uh, this HTML, it's uh, uh, rendered inside the component. But for example, if I take some of more complex, like for example, the success message, I'm able to see that I'm able to render more beautiful HTML directly inside this component. So this HTML, it's uh, created by using, uh, again, Tailwind CSS. And Tailwind CSS, it's uh, an open source framework, CSS framework, that implement a lot of uh, CSS class name already available. And then you need just to use specific class name to create the complex graphics inside uh, your HTML. OK, a uh, more complex example could be, for example, this one, timeline. I put this uh, HTML inside string inside my component, and my component render, again, on a beautiful UI using HTML and Tilewind CSS. Why I use Tilewind? just because it's more simple to decorate the HTML to apply uh, custom styles than use uh, uh, directly the style attribute, for example. And the last one that I want to show you, come on, just one moment. It's the complex one, because the, this previous sample render only the static HTML. But I want now to show you the possibility to use dynamic HTML by using some JSON value. I copy and paste uh, just on a JSON value. And I want to show you this portion of HTML that use, uh, again, Tilewind and the, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit template syntax to uh, generate dynamically uh, at runtime. So I put this one inside the property, and this is the example. So this example, it uh, re represents, for example, on a, a dashboard. And this data come from the JSON value that I pass to the JSON data property. The good part is if I try to click inside on a specific uh, div, this HTML, it's uh, completely dynamic. And then uh, I'm able to show an, another div and uh, inside this, another div, of course, it's dynamically. And then if I click a different box, the value change. If I click again, I'm able to hide because uh, inside here, I use the toggle function inside the template. And then the good part is if I click on the value inside this div, OK, I have two output properties. Sorry. The event type details click and the event data uh, that contain the value that I pass this function. So if I click here, for example, or here, and I click the total subscribers, I'm able to show here the total subscriber value. This means that if I go inside uh, on a Canvas app demo, that use, of course, this control, OK? and then click on Start, I'm able to see that if I click, it's work, of course. And if I click on the label here, I'm able to show here inside two labels inside the, uh, the Canvas app, the name of the event, the value that I pass to the event, and I'm able to manage the onChange property to interact with, the, with an, an event to the Canvas app. For example, these two labels take the value from the event data and event type from this HTML template component. But if I navigate here inside the on change event, I'm able to use, for example, the notify to notify some value. Or 
if I want to implement uh, by using the HTML template and JSON data, for example, on a navigation bar, I'm able to read the uh, event data and the uh, event type. And then, for example, uh, when I click on a specific uh, item uh, inside the my HTML, navigate to another screen inside the same application. So uh, I don't have too much time, but I want to show you the implementation of this component. So basically, it's on a Power Apps uh, component framework by using, uh, of course, uh, TypeScript uh, as a language to create this component and have uh, four different types of uh, properties, the HTML template, the JSON data, event type, event data. This uh, event type and event data, it's uh, two output parameters. And then inside the implementation, we have uh, Inside the init, the initialization of the control, we create the template context for the template engine of the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to have the set state, get state, toggle state, and invoke event. And then I use a library, Twind, that it's uh, the browser and runtime implement implementation for uh, Tailwind CSS, just to generate, analyze the HTML and generate the style based on the class name present inside the uh, HTML string. Inside the update view, we have just the logic to take uh, the update view. It's uh, called every time that uh, the property uh, of the controller changed. And then I take the um, basically the um, HTML template and I pass the template helper that comes from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to render on a specific template inside on a specific element. Of, of course, the container of my control, and then I pass the data context that come from the JSON data and the template context. And at the end, we have, of course, a get output that return the two output properties. And the magic is inside the template context because we have the possibility to set uh, the, the controls to update view or notify output changes. Okay, I think that's all for me. This is the reference I want to show you for the, um, this, this control, just the, uh, the reference for the HTML text control, the default control for uh, Canvas app, how to create component by using uh, the Power Apps component framework, and how to customize, so how to use the template of the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to implement the template for this control, and just an introduction of the Twind uh, library to implement the Tilewind uh, CSS inside your HTML template. Thank you. Back awesome. To you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Really, really cool stuff. I, I included those links there into the chat for everyone as well so they can reference them. Uh, well, thank you to Joe and Fabio, both of you. A huge round of applause. The crowd uh, is cheering, so thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to share with the community. The recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 Community YouTube channel. Uh, you can subscribe at aka.ms forward slash m365 slash videos. That'll let you know exactly when they've been uploaded. You can also follow us on Twitter at Microsoft365Dev at M365PNP. The next M365 General Dev and Power Platform call, which you are in right now, is going to be two weeks from today, October 27th at 7 a.m. And the next Viva Connections SharePoint Framework, one week, October 20th at 7 a.m. as well. You can see all the other community calls at aka.ms slash M365 slash calls. Uh, remember, you can't download the video, even though it shows you that you might be able to in the chat. Uh, just make sure you go subscribe. Look for that blog post uh, as well on our blog site. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Fabio, and all of you in the community that contribute to making this the best community in tech. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the rest of Ignite, and have a wonderful weekend.